You know, I'm guessing that there's uh, at least a hundred creative people in this audience. And I'm hoping that I'll get a chance to, to meet some of you. I find all the creative people that I meet are innately creative. Whether they're musicians or visual artists, chefs or writers, they need to make things. But none of them are, are really necessarily good at what they do in the beginning. Because the, the skill is something that has to be learned. Um, it's important to creative people to have both the idea but also the ability to execute that idea. Because one's not really going to work without the other. I mean, you can have one and you'll get lucky every now and then, but it's, it's really when you, when you possess both that you consistently make good work. I'd like to take you on a quick visual journey through some of my work over the past few years to sort of help illustrate my point. I started out as a photojournalist. I think. Maybe. Hey, did not there, I did, I did start out as a photojournalist. <laughs> Which was a lot like being a, a, a fly on the wall to me because you really had to you really had to stay, stay the hell out of the way. Move really fast when you needed to. And I was basically just capturing moments as they were unfolding right in front of me, and then I would sort of report back as a neutral observer. And this could be anything from sports to features, spot news, or even those really fun assignments like shooting concerts from the front row. And what I found early on in my career was that I had pretty good ideas, but I seriously lacked the technical ability that I was gonna need if I wanted to flourish in my industry. And then my work took a different direction. Well, I started shooting for travel publications. And I was no longer just observing with my camera lens, but you see, in the world of editorial photography, I was given the opportunity to control some of the elements in the images that I was making. And I liked that idea of control. And it started off sort of innocently enough for me, but I, I think you'll see as we go through that it kind of grew into a into a crazy obsession for me. This is a picture of my son, and I shot this at the, uh, at the aquarium in Atlanta, Georgia. And I can look at this image now, and I, I clearly see that I missed this day for the, for the fun-filled family day that we set out for it to be, because <laughs> I was too busy trying to make the perfect image. And I think there's a, a fine line between honing in on your craft and just becoming kind of obnoxious and annoying. And I'm, I'm not really sure on this particular day what side of that line I was standing on, although I'm sure my son would be happy to tell you what side he thought I was standing on. But I do know that it was at this point in my career as I was, I was traveling across the country and I was, I was not only looking for it, I was creating sort of a, a sense of beauty in each of these communities that I was going into. But I, I became completely obsessed with the technical side of photography. I, I didn't just want that control, I also wanted a better understanding of that control. Well, I started using a lot of lights in my work because lights gave me options and helped me create drama. And I was having a really good time until I realized that in becoming so obsessed with the technical side of photography, I really forgot how to interact with my subjects. And I really wasn't making compelling images at all. I mean, they were perfect, technically, if you're looking at lighting and composition and exposure, those kind of things. But more often than not, I, I found that they were boring and kind of lifeless. I almost like this picture. I think the lighting is good and the composition is strong. But if you really look closely at this guy, I feel like he's about to jump out of his own skin. And this is an example of an image that I couldn't put out in the world and really feel good about. It was time for me to learn how to take the technical side of what I did and the creative side and sort of funnel them into consistently making good work. Now, I think this is probably a good time to put it on the proverbial table that I really think ideas trump technical ability every time, but an idea is not worth very much if it can't be executed. I think we need to learn, no, we need to master our crafts, and then we need to learn how to make them second nature. And that was the biggest problem for me, 
trying to make it second nature. T trying to make it second nature was, was interfering and bruising my creativity. And I needed to figure out a way that I could sort of nurse that back to health. So I gave myself personal projects. I said, I needed to strip all the bells and whistles off my camera. I needed to stop worrying about the technical side of photography so much and really get back to creating because it was that need to make things that led me to photography in the first place. It, it certainly was not the technical side because I'm, I'm really bad at math. So I gave myself a 365 project. You, you guys know what this is. It's, it's where you set out to do something every single day for an entire year. And then I, I would use social media to hold me accountable to make sure that I, I saw this project all the way through. And I began shooting pictures every day with my iPhone. That's what these are. So because the iPhone was a, a one button, no pressure, always with me camera. So I started shooting and then editing and then posting images every single day using nothing but an iPhone. And at, at some point during that year, I would give myself even more difficult challenges. I, I would give myself challenges like shoot 10 images in 10 minutes within 10 feet of wherever you're standing at any given time. And not wait for something interesting to be going on, but, but shoot 10 pictures in 10 minutes within 10 feet right now. And so what I found was that over a period of time, the technical side of photography for me was becoming second nature. And, and my creativity was coming back to the forefront and it wasn't long before I was making images that weren't just technically capable of standing on their own, but they were also creative and engaging enough to stand on their own. And it was being done on more of a consistent basis. But I'm just one guy who's trying to get creative with his technical ability. Could this work for a team environment as well? What if you had one person who was really technical at something and then you had one person who was really creative? Or, or better yet, what if you had a hundred people that were creative? See, I'm, I'm guessing there's at least a hundred creative people in this audience today. And, and not only would I I'd like a chance to meet you and hear what you have to say, but I'd like an opportunity to collaborate with you and photograph what you have to say. I'm hoping that during one of the breaks today, you'll meet me in the lobby and you'll, you'll help me make something that's not just creative and interesting and technical sound, but also something that collectively, together, we can be proud to put out the world.